So it's Amanda from I Sew A Lot and I am back and I know it's been ages um, but I've had quite a lot going on just lately. Um, uh, first of all, a bit of housekeeping, just to let you know, I do have a new camera so this may be a bit of a yeah, test run, I'm not sure what the audio quality is going to be like um, or anything like that. Obviously we're also in a different location and that is because, as I've said in previous videos, um, I really struggle with the light in the winter so um, this is actually my wardrobe room and where you've seen it from my excuse me my Instagram photos um, but this um, has better light because the light um, is just coming over the top of the house so this is actually at the front of my house so I thought I'd uh, film in here just for a change of location I'm hoping that I've got the setup okay so you'll be able to see my garments so, like I said, I've had a lot going on um, with the Cozy Cardi Challenge, obviously quite time consuming. Um, I've also had a lot going on with work and unfortunately I've also had um, some family issues. So, um, that's why I've been a little bit quiet. Um, I have still been sewing, but I have to admit, um, because everything was getting a little bit much for me, um, I have taken a step back and in November I decided to limit my commitments so I didn't agree to any um, pattern tests and I didn't agree to any blog posts other than for satisfaction because I couldn't let Shona down um, but other than that I tried to keep it um, on a little bit of a back foot um, and also that meant that I wasn't going to upload a plans video because then I would feel that I was committed to making however many things so anyway um, I've got a few things to show you. I'm not going to show you everything I've made because I have made some items which I you have seen from me before. So what I thought I would do is I would show you uh, the things that I've made that are new patterns to me, um, how I found them, and yeah. So I think my cat's creeping around somewhere. Yeah, there she is. Um, yes. Yeah, so I'm going to show you the new things. I've got a cup of coffee. Hang on. Oh, that was a bit slurpy. Okay, so. Anyway, what I'm going to show you is the first thing that I'm wearing and um, I'm not going to talk too much about this uh, because I made it for the Satisfaction blog. So if you want to find out more about it, if you hop over to the Satisfaction blog, you'll find it on there. Um, all I will say is, it's the Coco Jacket by Snitching Patterns and um, I'll just give you a little bit of a view it's fully lined so I used um, obviously to write for the blog post you get gifted um, fabric and I made mine from this really really lovely mustard I think it's called Old Gold on the website I don't know if she has any left but if she does I'll link it um, denim which is a really nice weight denim really lovely quality and I've lined it and I know this is not a lining that will last as good as say an acetate lining but it's viscose lining which I love um, to line jackets with viscose because obviously it doesn't stick to your clothes and um, you obviously get a better range and it just feels really nice on the skin because it's a, um, a natural uh, fabric and it doesn't um, it gives a nice amount of slip when you put it on so I'll stand up and see if I can show you so the reason I went for this jacket over the Sew so Over It Coco jacket is that as you can see it's slightly shaped um, and obviously the lining because the cocoa jacket from sew over isn't lined so we'll just show you from the back and I think the fit turned out really well um, oops it also has um, the same as the cocoa jacket a two-part sleeve that means obviously it's got an under sleeve and an upper sleeve which gives you a better range of movement the um, I found that the sleeves went in really really easily which gives it a thumbs up from me I really like this uh, curve at the top and also um, on the bottom although my curves they could have done with being slightly rounder but yes so um, if you want to hear more about it hop over to the blog and like I say I'll link it down below so the other thing I made if I could just slip this off um, is my sleeves are all wrinkled up. The Eddie Top from the Sew so Over It Works Weekend ebook. And I made this from this really lovely jersey which I've had my eye on 
for ages from Pin and Sew and she also, the lovely Aga also, this is um, a dark navy but she also has it in a red colourway so white with red stripes as well and um, it's a cotton jersey, it's got, um, it's not an interlock, I think it has got a spandex elastane content so really nice amount of recovery um, but yes I made the eddy top I'll just stand up so I can show you and as you can see the length is pretty good on me I went for a size 8 which is my normal size for sew over it patterns the only thing I will say is as you can see it's slightly wide for me on the neck so I could do with sort of taking a wedge out I think but I do tend to have that problem with boat necks anyway because I've got quite narrow shoulders so um, I like it I've worn it a lot and every time I put it on I like the way it looks but um, there are a few things about it which I'm not 100% keen and I don't know how it would be resolved and um, slash necks are normally the same but I don't like the way you still have a raw edge just to turn under on the neckline um, I do like the fact that that's interfaced because it gives it a nice amount of structure and as you can see it's not gapy here um, it's just that I've got a little bit too much volume across the front here so yes I made the pattern exactly as it said I didn't make any changes and yeah the fabric is really lovely and I've actually ordered some I ordered this and the red and then my husband saw the red and said oh you could make me a t-shirt out of that so I have actually also made him and I don't know if I, oh I can see it hang on just a sec it's in his wardrobe um, I've made him a men's metro tee I haven't got a photo of him and this is really crumpled because it's been on his shelf but yes this is also really lovely and it turned out really well got the neck really nice but yes so I ended up having to order some more for myself so I do have this in a red and I can't decide whether to make another eddy top and see if I can adjust um, this front bit and also the back I have the same problem at the back there is too much gape there as you can see um, yeah so anyway that's enough about that okay so um, I'm just going to grab one more thing that I can put on over this to show you and then I'll get changed so I'll be back in a minute okay so another thing that I made um, for as part of the cozy cardi challenge because when the cozy cardi challenge comes around I quite like to make up some samples so that people um, can see what they look like and decide whether it's for them um, I also was approached by Aga um, to do a blog post for uh, Pin and Sew um, but I think that was in October I believe yes it was October um, so um, I did that and she asked me if I would like to write a blog post all about the Cozy Cardi Challenge so um, I had already made a few cardigans from her fabrics which are obviously gorgeous um, and so I had just ordered some more uh, with the plans to make another couple of cardigans so um, I had this on my radar for a while um, the lovely Danny of Pocket or Two made uh, a version of this cardigan which is the Stylark Como cardigan and I really really loved it so I'd been coveting that and um, when I saw this mustard French terry from Aga I thought it would be perfect so I just stand up so as you can see it is a quite a long cardigan it comes to just above my knees it's got these really lovely big patch pockets on the front um, it's got the wide band and this fabric obviously it's I mean it's so soft it's got a really wide band on the front um, the sleeves are nice and long although I quite like them rolled up but they've got a really big deep cuff on them um, it also has this unusual feature of shoulder darts and the neckband, um, instead of stitching two pieces and then having a centre seam at the back of the neck, it actually has, and I don't know if you can see, but it's actually got an angled seam there. Um, that is the only area that I'm not 100% happy about. I've got quite small shoulders, and with these kind of shoulder darts, I have had problems in the past. I made a named, um, what's that called? I think it's called the Geneva Raglan T, and that's got a curved... Um, 
raglan so you've got a shoulder dart a curved shoulder dart and I have awful trouble with fitting but again as I said previously I think that might be down to me having quite narrow shoulders but the neck does stand away from my neck a bit the neck band but I have worn it loads and it is like wearing a blanket so you can't really go wrong but this is one of the patterns um, like I said that I haven't made before for the Cozy Cardi Challenge um, and if you want to hear all about the versions I made for the blog post for Pin and Sew I made a Jenna cardigan, a Jamie cardigan, this one and also a Blackwood cardigan um, I'll put the link down below to the blog post so you can hop over there and have a look okay so I have to get changed so I'll be back in a minute okay so uh, the next thing I have made is this and it is what is it even called oh it is um I think I need to prop my camera up slightly because I feel like you're I'm cutting the top of my head off that's better okay so the next thing I've made is this and it is the I think you say it Pilvi Pilvi trench coat um, dress from named patterns and I have had my eye on this pattern probably well since its release I don't know how many years ago that was two or three years ago I saw a version made by the lovely Rachel um, Rachel Pinero and her version was really lovely and then um, I kind of it kind of went off my radar for a while and then I saw a really lovely version recently uh, made by Emily of self-assembly required um, and I think she made it for um, the named uh, pattern book release recently so um, and there was a party at the new craft house I saw and she wore it to that and um, it was really lovely and it jumped back to the forefront of my mind um, so I had this rusty Pontaroma that I bought from um, Crafty So and So um, and I had planned to make another South Bank but then uh, when I when I that pattern jumped back into my mind I thought oh yes I've probably just about got enough for that well I didn't have enough because I'd only ordered I think um, two meters and so I needed extra for the tie belt so I stand up and show you so I had to order another meter which was a bit annoying but um, yes it has this really lovely tie belt I'll turn around and um, yes it's got these nice pockets on the front which I really like that feature they're in the seams because it's actually princess seamed so what I have done is supposed to have buttons on it and I haven't sewn it with as much finesse as I would like um, but I didn't want the buttons to interrupt it I wanted it to be um, a bit more a bit more plain so I haven't put the buttons on but as you can see just around the area where the pocket is I have stitched the two front pieces together and my tie belt covers it anyway but I think it looks okay um, and it still gives that lovely um, trench coat look um, but I find um, I don't really like doing buttonholes on jersey even if I interface them they still don't go that well for me generally so I didn't want to ruin it um, and you know what it's like when you're trying to unpick buttonholes especially on jersey I didn't want to ruin it so I just came up with that way to uh, to um, stitch it together and it seems to have worked perfectly so yes that is my Pilvi trench dress and I'm really really happy with it I've worn it lots of times already and I get some really nice compliments on it when I wear it so yes that is that so I'm gonna get changed and I'll be back in a minute okay, so I'm hoping you can see this the next thing I have made um, is the pumpkin dress from Kokowawa Crafts and as you can see it's a 60s style um, dress it's got this lovely placket down the front and I've used snaps all the way down mine um, it's also got contrasting bands and I think mine I made the scoop neck version I think um, and I use this Pontaroma which is obviously like a camely colour from Minerva Crafts and I also had this black Pontaroma um, in my stash which I've used for the accents it's obviously got a hem band which is black as well and I really like this pattern the only thing is my own fault that my two fabrics had were a different weight so as you can see this Pontaroma is quite light and flowy whereas the contrasting Pontaroma is actually quite stiff so the pattern tells you to interface this button band at the front um, which 
Um, I used interfacing, knit interfacing to do as the pattern told me, but actually because the pattern it ended up that the um, fabrics, it made the fabrics two completely different structures that as you can see I get some slight drag lines at the front. It's not too bad if I really pull it down, um, but yeah, I've got a drag, drag lines here. So if I made it again, I don't think and particularly as I was using snaps rather than doing buttonholes I don't think I would um, use interfacing particularly if I was using a relatively heavy weight Pontaroma so yes I'm really happy with it though um, I've worn it quite a few times and yes a really nice comfy cosy dress for the autumn I had I wanted to do contrasting bands because I had those in my mind after I saw the saw the Stitch Sisters versions which were amazing so uh, I couldn't go with either black or white or red or white because that uh, red or black because those are the colors that they chose so closest thing camel and black okay so I've got to get changed I've still got uh, three things to show you I think so I'll be back in a minute Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is this, and it is the Sorrel dress by Jennifer Lauren. And um, this was recently part of the Kickstarter, the Kickstarter campaign, um, because Jennifer, I know, had been approached lots and lots of times and asked if she would, if there was any um, chance of her doing paper patterns, because prior to that, all of her patterns were digital files. And there are obviously quite a few people out there who aren't on the uh, PDF. Um, they're, they're not PDF fans because um, of all the sticking together um, but obviously um, to produce paper patterns is an expensive process so she thought um, she would get help with the funding um, and um, to top up what she um, already had and so she uh, started a Kickstarter campaign and the main pattern focus for the Kickstarter campaign was the Sorrel dress and it was only available to purchase through the Kickstarter campaign and she put a call out to all the uh, testers, patent testers, to ask if they would like to be part of it um, and I have made uh, the Sorrel from this really lovely um, pink herringbone cotton that I got from So By The Sea. I was down there visiting Jenny and I saw this and I knew it would be perfect. So as you can see it's a shirt dress it's got a really nice uh, wide placket down the front. I've used press studs on mine and it's got these uh, two tucks here which are mirrored on the top. Uh, there's no darts because those are the darts for the bust shaping and those are the same at the back. Um, it's obviously got a kimono style sleeve with this lovely collar. There is also another version which doesn't have this placket, it has a grown on placket. Um, and you, I have made it from a sturdy um, fabric which is similar to denim um, but you can make it from a viscose um, and I know on um, Jennifer's Kickstarter campaign and probably on the website there she has made it in some really beautiful Atelier Brunette viscose um, so if you'd like to see it in other fabrics then I will leave a link to that down below so yes I'm really happy with that, how it turned out the same as with um, Jennifer's other recent patterns, it has different cup sizes. I made the size 6 and I went for a C cup and it fits me perfectly. I'm really happy with it. Um, and I am wearing it over the top of a Megan Nelson Ryan bodysuit which is perfect and I think I'm also going to wear it tons in the summer without anything under it. So anyway, I'm going to get changed. I've got two more things to show you. I will be back in a minute. Super annoyingly, I just packed everything up, then flicked back through the videos and realised that I hadn't recorded this. I'd recorded in the bit in between where I was getting changed. So anyway, this is uh, another Jennifer Lauren make, which is the Jennifer Lauren Ivy Pinafore. I've had my eye on this pattern as well for the longest time probably a couple of years um, and I've been coveting uh, a couple of versions made by the lovely, um, I think her name is uh, Roisin and it is, uh, her, her blog is Dolly Clackett so um, yes, uh, she made a mustard version recently and a denim version and it put it back to the forefront of my mind I had this pattern for ages, I purchased it ages ago but I just hadn't made it 
and I saw, I saw this really really lovely black denim it's a stretch denim from the lovely Cheryl of Stitchy Bee and very kindly when I ordered it she sent me I think it was the end of the bolt so she sent me slightly uh, more than I ordered which was really really lovely so thank you Cheryl if you are watching um, so yes let me show you so it's a uh, A-line shape pretty short which I really like um, it's got this yoke detail at the front I'll show you closer in a minute and from the back and yes so this got this yoke detail which runs across here my cat is going crazy in the background sorry about that and I just used some really big black buttons that I had in my stash the other thing about this which I really like is that it is fully lined which I really like and as you can see I have used this really really lovely viscose crepe that I purchased as a remnant from uh, Lamazzi Fabrics and I wanted viscose because as you know cotton sticks to tights like crazy so viscose is a really good option for lining if you don't want to use that um, acetate lining because it's more breathable so I'm really happy with this um, unlike the other patterns from Jennifer Lauren um, this was one of her first patterns so it doesn't have the differing cup sizes I think it's made for a D cup but I made the size 6 which is the normal size I make in her patterns and the fit is fine as you can see I've got just the right amount of room everywhere it's not too tight still gives me a lovely shape um, and yes I'm really happy with it it's got flat felt seams down the back down the front center seam not the back just the front um, and yes I really like this yoke um, element I think it's really nice okay so I'm gonna get changed and I'll be back in a minute okay so the last thing that I have to show you is this and this is the Rachel jumpsuit um, which is a recent release from the lovely Athena of Athena Kaku patterns and I was really lucky to be a tester of the Rachel jumpsuit and the Nikki cardigan obviously named after my girls the Stitch Sisters and um, yes I was really really delighted to be asked to test these patterns as um, yeah I have a really really lovely uh, connection with the Stitch Sisters as we've done the Cardi Cardi Cozy Cardi Challenge two years in a row now um, and yes so I made the Rachel jumpsuit um, it is a wide leg trouser pattern which also has the option of adding uh, these panels uh, to make it to jumpsuit it's got uh, pleats at the front it's got slash pockets which I really like because they are front facing so they don't create any bulk on the hips it's got this uh, lovely waistband as well and yes so I'll show you from the back it's got a back uh, centre back zip um, and the lovely um, panels on the back as well so I won't be able to show you the width um, so I will insert an image I made it and I'm hoping you can see from this uh, slub denim from the lovely Sarah of like so amazing and um, I really like this pattern it's it's really comfortable really easy to wear it's wide legs so obviously that appeals to me um, the only thing the only change I would make is I obviously made um, these panels to the right length for me they fit fine um, but I think if I had if I were to make it again and I was in, using the panels I would add a slight um, amount to the crotch depth because um, I do they are a bit high in the rise at the back the front the front is fine but the back is slightly um, too short but if I take these off then it's fine so if I were just making the standard trouser version which you can I would not um, add any crotch depth because I think it's fine and it's not that my straps are too short because as you can see if I made them longer if I made them longer they would keep falling off so I think the straps are the right length but yes if I was going to make it again I would add probably only about three quarters of an inch or something to the crotch depth so that is it a um, bit of a bumper vlog today I'm afraid um, and like I say I did make lots of other things but they are things that you've seen from me before 
Oh, the other thing I wanted to say that I did make which was successful and might be of interest to other people um, is that I said I was going to make some pyjama bottoms for my boys using the free pattern from um, Oliver and S which is the sunny day shorts and I did make those and they were a success and all I did was I cut the right size for their age and I lengthened it I think I added and they are seven but gonna be eight in February and I added I think 16 inches to the hem just carried the lines straight down and they turned out really well so I'll be making those again and they were a test one because I'm planning to make them some pajamas for Christmas so that worked out really well so yes um, obviously we're nearly mid-month now so I probably won't come back to you with the plans but over the Christmas period I am off so I will have time to vlog and I'm hoping that I'll be able to show you my December makes because I've got some really nice things planned so that should be a bit interesting maybe um, and I also want to do a roundup of my favourite patterns for this year um, and so hopefully I will be able to get that to you uh, probably end of December, early January and also my plans going forward for January um, generally what I would like to achieve um, yeah, so I'll be back soon with that. I've had a flurry of subscribers. I don't know why because I've been awful with keeping up with vlogging. But um, hi to all you newbies and thanks for coming along for this. Um, I have uh, been vlogging now for over two years and the interest in my channel has uh, just amazed me. And I am so glad that um, my subscribers find my channel interesting enough to come back. <laughs> And I have such lovely comments from everybody. Um, it definitely makes it all worthwhile. So, anyway, ramble over. Thanks for stopping by. And if I don't speak to you before, everybody, you see, if I made them <laughs> longer, they would fall off. Um, yeah, everybody, if I don't speak to you before, have a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year. So, I'll see you soon. Bye.